All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. Uh, the name of the video is Whatever Happened to Confederate President Jefferson Davis? He lost. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's funny is that so when he got captured, he, um, he tried to escape, I think uh, a couple of times, um, by dressing like... I think uh, dressing in his wife's like dress or or something like that. He also tried to like escape to the UK, and um, you know, and they basically that didn't function very well at all. He tried to basically bring his his own sense of government to um, the UK and and France. I think also that didn't work, bro. Keep that over there. Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at what happens to Confederate President Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis was attending a Sunday church service in the capital of the Confederacy, Richmond, Virginia, when he heard the news. Union General Ulysses S. Grant had broken General Robert E. Lee's defenses in Petersburg, less than 25 miles from Richmond. By nightfall, the evacuation of Richmond needed to be completed. At approximately midnight, Confederate cabinet members, officials, their families, and the entire treasury, the mythical Confederate gold, were finally making their way south to Danville, Virginia. They did this on the only railroad that was still open. This was April the 2nd, 1865. One week later, on April the 9th, General Grant and General Lee met at the Appomattox Courthouse to sign the Confederacy's official surrender. America's Civil War was finally over. Even with a surrender and the Civil War effectively over, the President of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis, didn't want to admit defeat. He set up a temporary government in Danville with his trusted advisors, John H. Regan, Judah P. Benjamin, John Breckinridge, and Burton Harrison among them. He did this to try and figure out a way to reinforce their troops and push the fighting further west. Privately, he began making plans to flee abroad to a sympathetic Britain or France in order to create a government in exile. It was not to be. On the 15th of April, President Lincoln was Yeah, they were like, bro, get out of here with your nonsense. Assassinated. Now President Andrew Johnson was under the false assumption that Davis and his cohorts had been directly involved in the murder of the president. Right. Union troops with the U.S. War Department's $100,000 bounty, about $1.6 million today on Davis motivating them, moved towards Danville. And definitely when he got captured, uh, yeah, $100,000 bounty, sure. He also had to pay $100,000 to get out, guys. Keep that in mind. He bailed himself out. Davis and company retreated even further south. They ended up in the town of Washington in Wilkes County, Georgia. On May the 4th, Davis held what would be the Confederacy's final cabinet meeting in Washington's state of Georgia bank building. Davis authorized payments from the Treasury to his officials and left the rest in the care of Captain Clark in Washington, where it disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Davis, with his family, had been traveling throughout Georgia when they finally made camp in Irwinville in central Georgia on May the 9th. The next morning, they were awoken by gunshots. The 1st Wisconsin and 4th Michigan Cavalries had caught up to them. There are several different interpretations of what happened in those final moments of freedom for Jefferson Davis. Yeah, there are a lot While of weird flee, stories. If you notice, notice how they're depicting him right here, guys, really quickly. Sorry to interrupt him. Uh, let me do this here. Apologies. This is how he tried to escape, literally by dressing like his wife. Attempting to, right? Um... That may be a myth. I don't. I'm not sure. I, again, I wasn't there, guys. Right, but um, to my knowledge, that's the story that I know of. Right, but I know there there are definitely a couple of other stories, guys. Uh, like being dressed in his wife's shawl, very specifically, is another one. Um, also wearing a like a Union Army petti petticoat type of thing. Also, he tried to escape, bro, for real. But I have no idea which one is the actual accurate depiction of what actually happened, guys. Um, but all right. Northern Press wrote that he was wearing his wife's shawl and or petticoat in an attempt to trick his captors. He was called a coward, and okay. later a popular song of the era was titled Jeff in Petticoats. Davis's wife insisted, backed up by other historical accounts, that he was okay. simply wearing a shawl because he had become quite ill over the last few days, and she had given it to him to keep him warm. Right. There was no escape. Jefferson right. Davis officially became a prisoner of the United States government. He was transported to Fort Monroe in Virginia, where he was held 
for two years as a military prisoner. Soldiers watched him 24-7 to ensure he didn't try to escape, that he ate, and didn't try to commit suicide. The country debated how to handle the most famous war criminal from the Civil War. At first, President Johnson wanted to prosecute Davis as a co-conspirator in the assassination of President Lincoln. However, as the trial for the... Listen, Fruit. I personally, if I was president, right, I wouldn't even go after him for the Lincoln thing. I'd go after him for the Confederacy thing, uh, you know, but maybe that's why I'm not the president, because I would have he would have had to be annihilated, bro. I'm sorry. Just from just from the. Uh, oh, that's your name. OK, <laughs> that's basically how that would have happened. But again, I'm not the president. So it makes a little sense to the world. Don't make me president. The true assassination conspirators wound down in late June 1865, it became clear that Jefferson Davis had no direct connection to the parties. Within a year, Davis was transported to much better quarters, and his wife was even allowed to meet yeah, got Monroe to be near him. That was like the first, like... Uh uh, like white collar criminal, I would say probably. Uh, what I mean by that is that they treated him. They, they ended up treating him like a, like he was just a resident in a hotel, guys. According to the Virginia Foundation of Humanities, Davis respected the way he had been treated by the government. He was afforded certain privileges, like visitors, exercise, and time with his wife, that they didn't necessarily have to give him. On May the 13th, 1867, he was released into civilian custody on a $100,000 bail. The editor of the New York Tribune, Horace Greeley, abolitionist, yeah, I don't get Smith, that, and bro. several other prominent Northerners paid that bail. Said Smith on his reasoning for doing this, My first reason for signing the bond was that Mr. Davis was entitled either to his trial or to his liberty. That the prisoner should have had a speedy trial is a general proposition which no one combats. There may have been sufficient reasons for unusual delay in trying Mr. Davis, okay. hardly, however, for a delay of two years. Well, yeah, two-year delay for trial is absolutely crazy. Again, uh, he was the president of the Confederacy. He is absolutely complicit in every single thing that they did so and stood for I, you know i mean i get it maybe by deleting him they would have probably made a martyr out of him maybe right uh but i think he still would have had to go bro because people have been honestly deleted for less in this country um but uh, and i never understood the the whole thing about letting him out on bail i never understood it guys President Andrew Johnson's own impeachment trial delayed any motions even further. Additionally, there were several issues that the prosecution, the U.S. government, ran into charging Davis with treason. For one, the defendant, Davis, demanded a trial which forced the government to figure out the correct way to prove the unconstitutionality of secession. Needless to say, this was a tough task, and the government Bruh. asked for more time to gather their arguments. Bro, people have been arrested and jailed for almost life in this country. Seriously for less evidence than that. Bro, you are guilty by association. If a person, you know, if, if for example, let's say you get into a car with somebody and they're, and the driver is just has done something absolutely crazy, you have no idea. Bro, you're going to jail with that person. I'm sorry. I don't believe in the fact that, that you can kind of separate these things, guys. It's not a, it's not a real thing. Like, why do we allow certain groups, very specifically governmental groups or people that are agents of the government, right, to have this weird style of immunity, right? You are absolutely guilty of, joining, of, of doing something if your partner did something, right? Because civilian life, you are, if, bro, you just got into a car accidentally. This, somebody said, hey, let's go take a ride somewhere or something. You got into the car, you hung, you went and hung out with the person, uh, and then all of a sudden you find out they just did something absolutely crazy. You are now complicit in whatever they did. The government doesn't care? Bro, you're going to go to jail with them. You're an accessory now, right? I, don't, I, just don't, I never understood. Again, people should not have that. that if, if civilians very specifically are, are penalized by this, then the agents of the government should also be, period. Arguments. You are Finally, absolutely in complicit. December 1868, a year and a half after he was released on bail, preliminary motions were held for Davis on the charges of treason against the United States for organizing and arming the 1864 military invasions of Maryland and the District of Columbia. Right. The defense immediately called for a dismissal of the charges. They said that since Davis would already be punished by the 14th Amendment, he could not be further prosecuted under the double jeopardy provision. The 14th Amendment had only been passed in july of that year and dealt with a lot of so he should not have been 
able to claim that then. Issues in regard to reconstruction, but in section three it read, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. The case went to the Supreme Court, but it was never tried, for fear that the Supreme Court would rule in favor of the defense and make the U.S. government look incompetent. President Johnson issued a pardon on Christmas Day, 1868, yeah. to all persons. I mean, like, listen, if the Supreme Court had gone by the letter of the law, okay, I guess. To participate. Yeah, he probably wouldn't been. He would have been let off. Jefferson Davis was no longer a wanted man. Right. Davis and his family traveled to Europe for a time after his release, no doubt disillusioned with the whole process of prosecution. Upon returning, he. Took took up residence in Tennessee. He kept himself to himself and didn't comment publicly about Reconstruction. Privately, according to William Cooper's biography on Davis, he thought of African Americans as inferior to white men and resented that the South was ruled by, as he put it, Yankees and Negro. He moved to an estate called Beauvoir near Biloxi, Mississippi. In fact, the state of Mississippi tried to make him a U.S. Senator only for him to be denied due to the previously mentioned amendment. As his quiet retirement continued, he completed a two-volume book in 1881 about his wartime experiences called The Rise and Fall of the Confederate Government. In 1888, his reputation as a Confederate hero restored, he said to an audience of supporters in Mississippi, lay aside all rancor, all bitter sectional feeling, and and make your places in the ranks of those who will bring about a consummation devotedly to be wished, a reunited country. On December the 6th, 1889, Jefferson Davis passed away in New Orleans, Louisiana. He was buried there for four years until 1893, when he was relocated to Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia. His remains remain there, in the same city where his fall began. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Ooh. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every single day of the week. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching. All right, guys, so here's the thing. Um, I definitely learned a lot more than I knew about Jefferson Davis. I never really cared enough. I mean, I knew a little bit, you know, probably just to have like, a, you know, a slight conversation regarding it. Um, but I definitely appreciate him for kind of filling in some of the blanks here. Uh, I never really cared what happened after he got bailed out. I just gave up on, <laughs> I just gave up on the whole story. I was just like, bro, you let this man bail out. You said a bounty of $100,000 and then you, well, keep in mind, $100,000 is crazy, right? Like back then, that's, that doesn't even make any sense, bro. Right? But, I mean, they said it to the point where it, it wasn't achievable. But, but then, I, I, you know, weirdly, someone from the north came in. Uh, it reminds me of a, of a quote from uh, Martin Luther King um, regarding the north, very specifically. Uh, the north was not as free and, and, and peaceful as people, for some reason, perceive. Um, it is still easily one of the more segregated places in the United States of America, the north. Um, so. You know, whatever, right? Not my business. I don't live in the North anymore, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I never really cared too much about what happened to him after because I was just instantly disappointed with the fact that um, he ended up just basically getting, just getting off completely and he was complicit. Bro, that's wild. That should never happen, all right? Um, listen, um, let me know in the comments on the next thing uh, from him that I should be checking out, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can, all right? And listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day thoroughly.